Good morning to all my friends uh, from St. Martin's. It's good to uh, at least be able to share this with you this morning. Uh, for our uh, meditation this morning, we're going to be using the service of prayer uh, from All God's People Sing. Uh, if you have one at home, you're welcome to join along with me and follow along. That's on page 26. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, by prayer, let your requests be made known to God. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our scripture reading for this morning is going to be a portion of the story of the crucifixion of Jesus from Luke chapter 23. And they led him away, and they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. Two others who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, and there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by, watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals, who were hanged, railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's quite a remarkable thing to see that as Jesus is is dying and hanging on the cross, one of the first things he does is he begins to pray. But who does he pray for? He's not praying for himself. Jesus is praying for those that put him there. He's praying for the people that crucified him. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What a great expression of of Jesus' love and his care and and the forgiveness that God has is that that Jesus is dying even for those people that put him on the cross. And we would think about maybe the soldiers as being responsible. It was their fault, partly. Uh, Or Pontius Pilate or or the leaders of the Jews, the the Pharisees, the, the scribes and the Sadducees and the high priest Annas and Caiaphas. They're all responsible for putting Jesus on the cross. And he prays for them, even those that hate him. Jesus still wants them to be forgiven and and to be saved and to be with him in eternal life forever. Again, that's a marvelous thing to think about, uh, the the fullness and the, the greatness of God's forgiveness, that it extends even to those people whose sins put Jesus on the cross. But it's also important to remember that that we're also responsible for putting Jesus there. That Jesus dies on the cross for us too. It's our sins that he carries to the cross. And so we, in the end, really are just as responsible for putting Jesus there as Pontius Pilate or as Annas and Caiaphas, the high priest, or as the soldiers that drove the nails into Jesus' hands. We're responsible too. 
It's just as much our fault that Jesus was there that day as it was anybody else's. Which just makes Jesus' prayer on the cross that much more comforting. When Jesus prays that God would forgive those that put him there, that means he's praying for us too. Jesus is praying from the cross that we also would be forgiven. And it's a very remarkable thing to think about, that as Jesus is dying on the cross, he's thinking about you. Long before you were even born, Jesus knew you. He had you in mind, and and he wants you to be forgiven. He wants you to have eternal life. And he was thinking about you on the cross. Even as he died, he was thinking about you. We should take great comfort in that, that. That Jesus loves us so much that long before we were born, he knew us and, and he wanted us to be forgiven. And, and he wanted us to have his great salvation and eternal life. But I think this is especially important to remember this week, this, this year as we celebrate Good Friday and, and Easter. Because it certainly isn't a normal Holy Week, is it? Far different way of celebrating this great holiday of, of Good Friday and Easter this year because, well, everything has changed because of the coronavirus. We're not at school together. We're not going to be able to come together in church on Sunday to worship. Probably won't even be able to get together with your friends and family on Sunday to celebrate with a nice big Easter meal. And these things cause us some pain and, and some sadness and maybe some fear and anxiety. And yet think about, again, what I just said, that, that Jesus knew you long before you were born. As Jesus was dying on the cross on Good Friday, he was thinking about you. Every single one of you. And he knew the sins that you would need forgiven, but he also knew all the stuff that's going on right now. Just as he knows what's going on today from heaven, he also knew back then what would happen to us. And as Jesus was dying on the cross, he died for this, for for everything that we're going through right now. He was thinking about you. He wanted you to be forgiven, but he also died that, that all of the stuff that we're enduring right now, that that would be overcome and and taken away. Jesus dies so that things like the coronavirus and and our fears and anxieties and all other sicknesses, he died so that those things would go away. And he died so that you wouldn't have to be afraid of them, and that we wouldn't have to endure them anymore. And again, Jesus was thinking about these very things, even as he was dying. And so we should take great comfort in these things this week. Knowing that Jesus not only has died for us, but was thinking precisely of us and of this exact situation as he died. And he wants us to be free from our fears and anxieties. And so as we celebrate Good Friday in just a couple of days, and as we remember Jesus' resurrection on Sunday morning, we should... Find great comfort in these things and, and not be afraid or, or anxious. But we should know and remember the great love that Jesus has for us. That he's died for our sins, that he's overcome death and sickness for us. And even right now, when it doesn't always seem like it, he's taking care of us. He knows exactly what's going on. He always has. And he's providing for us in the way that he knows is best, even if, even if we don't really think it's the best. God knows exactly what he's doing, and he's providing for us in the best way that he knows to do for us right now. And so we shouldn't be afraid. Again, we shouldn't be anxious or, or angry or doubt. But we should find great peace and joy in Christ's death. And his victory over the grave and over death and sin for us that grants us eternal life because we know 
that the love of God extends over us even in times like this. And, and this is precisely why Jesus has died for us. And so we give thanks to Jesus for this, this great gift of his forgiveness and, and for the faith that he grants to us in knowing that, that he does love us and his forgiveness extends to us. We who are the ones that are responsible for putting Jesus in the cross. We are forgiven. and We have the promise of eternal life, which also means that we have the promise of, of his victory over sin and death. And so in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, because you have committed your people to the ministry of intercession, hear us as we pray for one another. Fill our hearts with peace and love. We pray for the world. Lord of all, we pray for your whole creation. Enable us to bring an end to violence and injustice, to feed and clothe people, and to be faithful caretakers of the earth so that all may enjoy the good world which you have made. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. We pray for the church. Heavenly Father, be with your church. Give all ministers of the word your grace and truth, that your people might grow in faith, and that Christ may be honored by all. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. We pray for all those who are ill, especially all those that have been affected by the coronavirus. O source of all healing, we ask you to strengthen the tired, to ease the pain of those who suffer, and to let those who are dying know that you hold them in your loving arms. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. We pray for our families and friends. O God, our Father, Bless those we love and help us to love all people so that as you love us, we may grow in love for each other. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. We pray for all doctors and nurses and all those that care for the sick. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son is the great physician of both body and soul. Bless all doctors and nurses and, and CNAs and all those who care for the sick, that they may show your love and care to all those that are ill, and that those that are sick may be healed according to your will as quickly as possible. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. Almighty God, you have given us the grace to make our prayers known to you and have promised always to listen. Fulfill our requests, as may be best, and grant us knowledge of your truth in this world and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which 
surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God's blessings be to each and every one of you. And I wish you all a very happy and a blessed Good Friday uh, and Easter Sunday. Go in God's peace, and I hope to see you again soon.